Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. It's day number 37. It's a beautiful morning. It's 10 minutes till 9. I've been in the pool for a while. I've been having fun. I've been laughing. It is great. So, what's up? Well, I'm up. I got up. What's for breakfast? Eggs. Today, we're going to have eggs when I'm ready for breakfast. When is that? I don't know. It will be when I'm hungry. Am I hungry now? No, I am not hungry now. You eat when you're hungry. Now, here's a little thing. Tidbits from Thailand. I'm in a place that reportedly has some of the best tasting food in the world. I follow this couple this this wonderful couple that's on YouTube called Lloyd and Mandy. They have, for the last two or three years, traveled all over the world. They've lived in vans in Canada and, and motorhomes. They've lived in hotels in all these countries. Excuse me. From Europe to Asia. They've been everywhere. Literally everywhere. They just came to Thailand... And they said, you know, we want to settle down. We wanted to bring our dog. They brought their dog to Thailand. And and they knew what they wanted. And they found this house, this pool villa in Wa Hin. And, and it's wonderful. But then they did a video and they said, why are you moving to Thailand? Why? Well, I mean, what was some of the reasons? And one of their reasons was, Mandy said, this has the best taste of food in the world. Now, both of these individuals are young enough to be, you know, they're young. They're in their late 20s or 30s, I guess. I don't know for sure, but they're young. And they both have what looks to be good physiques. They're not overweight. They eat everything they want, and they look like they're in great shape, okay, which is wonderful. But... It just goes to show how darn hard it is in a land where people people have been looking at 50 different countries they've been in or whatever. They've been everywhere. I mean, they've just literally, you know, they've tried it all. And they said, well, the food here in Thailand is the best in the world. And what am I eating? I'm eating the same things every week. Yeah, ruminated meat. Got 16 two-inch thick ribeyes arriving probably today. And we'll do a video, an unpacking video, and go through and see what I got for the money. Because it might be different every time. And uh, how much it cost. And we'll show you where I'm getting my steaks from in in Thailand, and they're locally raised, grass-fed, and for the most part, I've been very, very, very happy with them. But it's hard to be in Thailand where when you walk down the street, you see street vendor after street vendor with these amazingly good-tasting things that I can't eat. Why can't I eat them? Because my body isn't designed. I am definitely, in my opinion, 100% wired to be a carnivore. Now, they may very well be wired to be an omnivore or a herbivore. You know, I've got a good friend. I'm going to have to, I'm going to try to get a talk to him online, I think. See if he'll let me interview him. But he looks to be extremely healthy. And I think he does quite well on an herbivore diet. Not everybody's the same. But it is damn tough on me to be in Thailand where they've got some of the tastiest, amazing omnivore foods in the world. But. I've got a choice. It's not easy. Do I want to be able to see my tops of my shoes or do I want to eat omnivore? 
Do I want to live longer or do I want to die? Do I want to be feeling great or do I want to eat omnivore and feel like crap in 20 minutes? You know, they say it's something about Chinese food, for example. They used to say it back in the United States, you used to say, well, you can go out to a Chinese restaurant. You, you can go to a Chinese buffet and pig out. Eat as much as you possibly can till you feel stuffed, and two hours later, you're hungry again. What is up with that? Well, let me tell you. It's that omnivore, eat that rice, eat that other stuff that's not ruminated meat or, you know, comes from an animal. And you're right, you're, you're hungry. So you eat this omnivore stuff from Thailand. You eat it and you're full, and then two hours later, you're full again. Or, I mean, you're hungry again. So, let me tell you, when I eat a two-inch thick ribeye, I can go a while. If I can get a two-inch thick ribeye that has enough, uh, enough meat left after I trim off all the fat. Because right now, remember, I'm taking an experiment. I need your comments in the comment section. You all tell me what you think. But right now, I'm not eating the fat as much as I can. As much as I can, I'm trimming the fat and letting, I don't know, letting it go to waste, I guess. Uh, I don't think noise eating much of the fat either. It's, but that's okay. I know I got plenty of fat to burn. I'm not going to deprive my body of fat because that's why I've been storing it up in case it needs it. Well, I'm giving it the protein. It has to come up with the fat on its own. That's its job. All right. Well, from Big Daddy Hannah's pool, see ya. That's all, folks.